Right, so Henry Kissinger is dead, and I was always taught to not speak ill of the dead, but in this case, it's frankly all good and decent people have, given how many people this despicable human being sent to their graves early, making it all the more perverse that he himself should reach the grand old age of 100, well past his sell-by date in the opinions of many. And while many people are opining on the man's track record, a short one in government actually, some might be surprised to hear, but one marked by so much death and tragedy that it might perhaps not surprise everyone here in the UK that he was considered something of an idol to a certain Tony Blair. Kissinger in many ways being the blueprint for the sort of politician Tony Blair went on to be. But if you think Kissinger's influence on Labour stopped there, you would unfortunately be very wrong, as his ties to Keir Starmer have also been well documented. And we can see that relationship and that influence being borne out in what Starmer is doing in the here and now, and what he himself might take into government. Right, so this is a little bit of a longer bit. I was toying with making two videos out of this, covering the connections between Henry Kissinger and Tony Blair, and then Henry Kissinger and Keir Starmer. But actually, everything is so intertwined, it proved a little bit difficult to do that. So I hope you're going to bear with me and see this slightly longer video through. It will be worth it, I hope. Anyway, Henry Kissinger is dead. For many people, even with just a passing familiarity with the man's gross deeds when part of the US administration, he is regarded as a mass murderer by a lot of people. But it's possible it hadn't registered with some people. The sad news of several other deaths on the same day. Shane McGowan of the Pogues, Dean Sullivan from Brookside, even perhaps former Chancellor Alistair Darling, he of the infamous black eyebrows. That might have meant she might have missed Kissinger's passing. A spiritualist type might perhaps think Kissinger had to take a few more down with him as he went, but... Let me just give you a brief overview of what this man did before we get on to his influence of Labour leaders later on, in case you think I'm being overly caustic, because actually I think I'm being rather restrained. Henry Kissinger's legacy, aside from in our current and former Labour Party, is that he made a lot of money, he held a lot of power, and he killed a lot of people. He was insanely clever, but was not a decent man with it. That's a horrible combination in power. In some ways, it is a relief he was only in the White House for eight years, two US terms serving under Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, where he was a national security advisor under the former and US Secretary of State under the latter. But his influence has lived on through what he did in US foreign policy whilst he was there. And again, still, through politicians today, including here in the UK. Kissinger will be remembered for his interventions in foreign wars and the results of his actions more than anything else. Take the Yom Kippur War of 1973, where Israel came under attack by both Egypt and Syria, along with other Arab states, seeking to take back occupied territory. Sound familiar? Since in 1967, not only did Israel occupy the Palestinian states of Gaza and the West Bank, but they also seized at that point the Golan Heights from Syria and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. Now, the US had been supplying Israel with military aid since the 1960s. If you wonder why they won't intervene over the occupation of Palestine now, it's probably because they helped Palestine get occupied to begin with. In Kissinger, again siding with Israel and with US help, they prevailed in the end, hanging on to their occupied territories. He turned the tide of that conflict which Israel was losing by throwing as much armament to Israel as he could. Then there was the Vietnam War. People will credit him with ending that, but that would overlook the incident of him also dropping thousands of bombs on Vietnamese people on Christmas Day in 1973, same year as Yom Kippur. In Cambodia, the US had been carpet bombing the place right up until that conflict ended, also in 1973. It was a busy year for Kissinger. And Kissinger is on record as saying in 1969, with regards to commentary that the bombing in Cambodia was excessive, that we would rather err on the side of doing too much. He also personally supervised the bombing runs there. At this point, some half a million Cambodians were already dead. Most people aware of Kissinger's record think of Cambodia as the worst. But that is mainly because the so-called secret war in Laos, the Laotian Civil War, is far less well covered. Laos, of all places in the world, this might surprise you to know this, holds the unfortunate record as being the most bombed country per capita in global history, with the US under Kissinger dropping more bombs on Laos than Germany and Japan combined during World War II. 260 million bombs dropped on Laos. To this day, the people of Laos make peace doves out of unexploded ordnance that they find that from time to time still comes up. 
If it was a civil war, why was the US involved though, you might be thinking? Well, that's why it gets called the secret war, because they had no business there. And basically because the American people had no idea it was ever happening. To this day, somebody in Laos is blown up by unexploded devices. The war ended in 1975, by the way, every two weeks. Hence why they make dubs from the bits they find. That's Kissinger's legacy. Every one of those little dubs you might see floating around in the world. A little bit of Henry Kissinger in it. There's even more than that. I never even got onto the coups that he led where he deposed leaders in Argentina or Chile. Uh, even wanted to engage with white supremacist governments in Southern Africa. Yes, South Africa indeed. I've gone on long enough here on Kissinger himself. I think my point is made. But let's bring up this to Kissinger's relationships with Blair and Starmer now, though, because this is the point of the video, after all, and I'm going to start with Starmer. There's a reason for that, which I'll come on to. But Keir Starmer, as a lot of people are aware of these days, was a member of the Trilateral Commission, a group started by Chase Bank founder David Rockefeller, and Starmer joined at some point in either 2017 or 2018. We don't actually know for sure, because Starmer refuses to talk about it, and he also refused to disclose the fact he had ever joined them to begin with during the tenure of then Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn or tell any of his team. And this was spelt out later by then Corbyn spokesman James Schneider, who said on this matter, Starmer didn't inform us that he was joining the Trilateral Commission while serving in the Shadow Cabinet. If he had, we would have put a stop to it, like we did when he tried to take an inappropriate outside job with city law firm Mishkondorea whilst Shadow Brexit Secretary. Membership of the Trilateral Commission, a body dedicated to promoting corporate power, was plainly incompatible with Labour's then stated policies of redistributing wealth and power from the few to the many. Can't argue with that. The Trilateral Commission are anti-democracy. They feel there is too much of it. They are very much pro-capitalism. It's notable that only one other MP has ever been a member, and that was Tory MP Rory Stewart, who left around 2016. Now, the Liberals' hero is, of course, as he is, such as the extent the Tories are tilting rightwards in their politics over the last several years, terrified of losing ground first to UKIP and now to Reform UK. But it just goes to show only a right winger would actually want anything to do with an organisation with beliefs such as that. And it should put to bed any foolish notion that Starmer will pivot leftwards in power. He is a Tory. At any rate, Starmer was on the Trilateral Commission at the same time as Henry Kissinger. Starmer only having resigned from the Trilateral Commission himself, presumably because he find, got found out. And that's only happened in the last year or so. Kissinger himself has only now left the commission by virtue of dying because he wasn't just any old member. He was a lifetime trustee of the Trilateral Commission. Now let's take a look at Tony Blair's relationship with Henry Kissinger. Immediately you can point to the million dead Iraqis at the hands of Blair and Bush and see echoes of Kissinger there. But even more so when you read how Blair eulogised Kissinger, actually idolised him. Here's what he said of Kissinger. Do try your best to keep your last meal down. He said... There is no one like Henry Kissinger. If it is possible for diplomacy at its highest level to be a form of art, Henry was an artist. I consider it one of the greatest privileges of my political life to have known him. From that first moment of meeting him to the last, he inspired me and taught me, and I will be forever grateful to him. Vomit-inducing stuff. Yes, Iraq sees exactly what kind of artistry Kissinger taught you by way of diplomacy, didn't he? His version using bombs instead of talking. To call Kissinger an artist reflects the heights of ignorance and the depths of depravity, but that's Blair all over. A million dead Iraqis for Blair, but Kissinger oversaw the deaths of millions. The man dodged the Hague, and I sincerely hope Blair still gets his day there one day. Starmer, bear in mind, considers himself to be Blair on steroids, so do keep that one in mind. Also bear in mind, Blair was joined at the hip to George W. Bush, bringing about the Iraq War. We can't just blame Blair for that. So it is worth mentioning that John Negroponte, Bush's Director of National Intelligence, and two former members of the U.S. National Intelligence Council, Joseph Nye Jr. and Richard Cooper, were also on the Trilateral Commission with Kissinger and Starmer. There are many more rabbit holes you can go down with all the connections between these three men, Kissinger, Starmer and Blair. So please do take a look at Declassified UK to read more in depth on this, because all of this is related to what we're seeing here and now. Would it surprise you to learn, though, that Keir Starmer is attempting to build connections to Benjamin Netanyahu now? Probably not, if you think like me and lean the same way politically. But as many of you will be aware, upon leaving UK politics, Blair, without a trace of irony, went on to become a Middle East peace envoy from 2007 to 2015. It's sickened so many people to their cores, but the rancid man has a habit of landing on his feet. But during his time in that role, and 
Previously, as Prime Minister, of course, he built up extensive contacts in the Middle East. And that includes Netanyahu and his hangers-on. Blair even still holds an office in Tel Aviv. He's been on a schmooze fest for Starmer, telling the Israeli government that he's not Jeremy Corbyn, because, of course, Corbyn is ardently pro-Palestine, and that under Starmer, should he get into power, should he become our next Prime Minister, Israel can expect a consistent approach. That's how it's been described. In other words, as I've said in so many other videos, nothing is going to change under Starmer. That goes for the UK's relationship with Israel too. I would suggest even more sycophantic in all likelihood under Starmer than it is now. Blair's intervention here is not in any official capacity, of course, yes, it's another one of those rare interventions of Blair, but his advice on this has apparently been sought. So this is Starmer almost certainly, I would suggest, with Mandelson's involvement as well, getting Blair involved to reassure Israel that the UK will still back them under a future Labour government. If you're wondering at this point if Netanyahu and Henry Kissinger knew each other, then wonder no more. Netanyahu praising him following his death as a great statesman, scholar and friend. Here's a nice pic of the two of them just last September gone. All very cosy, isn't it? So we have a situation where Henry Kissinger is connected to Starmer, Blair, Netanyahu, the Bush administration, the Trilateral Commission, even actually the US administration of Joe Biden. Because all of that foreign policy of theirs that Sunak and Starmer are both following on from loyally, having been crafted by current Secretary of State Antony Blinken, refusing to change tack unless the US does. The US have resisted a ceasefire until Qatar outplayed them and got one in place themselves, albeit just for one week. Well, you might not at all be surprised if you've watched this video so far to learn that Antony Blinken is a current Trilateral Commission member as well. This is the legacy of Henry Kissinger. Diplomacy by death and destruction, and he's seen as a hero by leaders across the Western world. Think about why so many wouldn't call for a ceasefire now instead of favouring temporary humanitarian pauses. Anyone taking a leaf out of his book shouldn't be allowed anywhere near power. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe if you did. More content out daily. Do have your say on this story in the comments below and be part of the conversation. Meanwhile, here's a video recommendation where the current ceasefire has ended between Israel and Gaza, but the reasons behind this according to Israel, are really very, very pathetic. Truly worthy of Kissinger himself, actually. And I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.